Alex Williamson here with the secret secret history living in your aquarium. I hope you guys are all doing wonderful. I'm doing pretty good. I don't know why my mustache looks yellowy orange here right now. Very odd. Don't know why I can't open this either. Um, I'm having problems. I need some fish fam help. Hold on. Let me let me set the the gimbalator down and uh, and figure this out. Oh, there we go. It was one of those things where the the ring uh, bonded to the plastic. Like there wasn't really even a, a separation. It just came off with the cap. So uh, such is life. Ah, Dr Pepper, please sponsor me. For the love of God, it's been three years, uh, four years that I've been rocking them. I mean, it's been a lifetime really, but I've been rocking them on the live streams and the videos pretty heavily. And uh, I mean, I am willing to get diabetes. Well, I may already, well, okay, let's keep that out of it because I'm positive for marketing and branding, but let's just say I'm willing to go pretty far for Dr. Pepper. So, I mean, come pass me some, uh, some, uh, this isn't a symbol for, or a hand gesture for money. It's, it's the symbol from cans of, of Dr. Pepper. Uh, how is everybody doing? Matt Thibodeau, Thibodeau, how's it going? Lady Diane, that's a regal name if I've ever seen one. Here, Laura, Laura, peeps, lost sheep, what's going on? Uh, Lydia, misfits, reptiles, and aquatics, how are you doing? Steven, what is up? Uh, by the way, Chubbs Aquatic, who just dropped in to see what condition my condition was in, uh, he left a awesome video on the YouTubes this morning. Uh, and it is about the uh, Mark Moth out of uh, China. And uh, in China, fine, I guess, it's okay. I mean, it's all right. But when it leaves China and comes to... Uh, America, then it eats our Crip Spiralis and our Crip Nymphae or our Nymphaea Micranthes and our uh, sword uh, broadswords. It eats everything. So um, check out his video. I linked it below uh, if you're at all concerned about a moth that scuba dives into your aquarium, lays eggs on plants, the, the, the larvae eat the crap out of your plants, and uh, I, I guess they just like the expensive ones. The, that's their thing. That's what they're into. So they just eat whatever ones cost you the most, and somehow they know by region what costs you the most, and that's what they eat, so be careful. Uh, let's see here. 503 Aquatics, how are you, Shanna? Doing uh, good, I hope. K-Day, what is up? You caught me live. You did it. Uh, Muppet, what's up? 40 Years Fish, Dev, what's going on? Uh, Lady Aquatics, hello. Uh, check the fish box. Hey, Alex, I have to go back to work, but glad you're streaming. You'll be back later. You better be. You better be. Fish Crazy, have, have we met before? Well, welcome. Uh, sorry, sorry if my memory fails me. Does often. Uh, T-Bone's Fishes, what's going on, T-Bone? Hope you're doing well. Oh, Quox has joined the channel to help support the utility bills, the medical bills, and the mental bills. Probably need some mental bills soon. But, uh, yeah, she, she, I would, I, I presume, uh, thank you so much for supporting the channel. It really means a lot that, um, the membership, uh, any membership, really, dollar ninety-nine ship and so on, you guys get access to more polls and like deciding what we're going to talk about and uh, definitely if I see a, a member needs help with something and a question or something those are always prioritized I'm up late hours so kind of an on-call helpline as well as uh, also um, you will get access to all my sources when I'm making a, a deep dive type video uh, uh, let's see uh, Sage P. Lindsay hello uh, Erna? Ah, hello. Welcome. I think that's a new one, too. So, uh, hello. And at, at H, H, H2O, I fish that we can talk about. Uh, yeah, I'd like to know if uh, Fish Crazy's in Germany from Deutschland. Hello. Uh, welcome. And glad you're joining us. 
Is the internet bad? Is that a thing that is happening for everyone? If it is, oh, okay, um, then that's not good. I wonder if getting off my, um, my, my Wi-Fi will fix that. I can try that. Is it, is it, can I get another confirmation? Internet's bad. Okay. Let's try. Any better? We getting any better. Um, Regina, hello, also. We got a very few folks in here today. I must be, um, it's horrible, never coming back again. Uh, is it any better now? Am I coming clear? Ground control, the Major Tom? Uh, it was, but you, it, uh, it was bad, it's good now. Pretty choppy, so good so far. Clear, buffering, buffering, better. It's okay now. <laughs> Lord, I feel like I have schizophrenia. Okay, I'm assuming it's better now, uh, as many of you are saying. All right, so good. Uh, yay. Uh, you guys can see me and my janky teeth and my bad skin uh, real clear. Good. Um, all right, let's see here. So today, as always, hello, Danikin. What is going on? I'm assuming, Kenny, because usually your wife says... It's Danny. Hi, guys. So I'm going to assume Kenny. What's going on, Kenny? Uh, how are you doing? Um, and uh, so today I got over 17 new species or new, maybe not species, because I got a few Madaka rice fish that are the same species, the Ortiz Lapsa, but they are, or Latips, uh, but they are different lines, different color lines. So I think it's like 17 species. So I got a whole lot of new species in the fish room. Uh, there will be an unboxing for those of you who like those, but I figured more folks would probably just want to see the fish colored up sooner than later. Aquamate, what's going on, Josh? How's it going? Uh, hope you're doing well. Um, and also, I think Rico's stream is probably going to finish up in like 15 minutes or something. So I might be biting on some of his style. Uh, I'll always love Rico. Uh, but I'm not changing my stream time right now. It's just, this is where it works on the weekends usually. So maybe I'll chat with him and maybe I can, well, maybe I will. I don't know. I've tried to change this stream so many times and there's always some conflict of, of interest with another streamer. So let's just, let's just rock it on. Uh, Rico Stan, Rick. So, um, <laughs> oh wow. Double streaming Rico and me. Well, in that case, tell Rico I wish him the best, and I'm sorry that I'm also streaming at the same time as him. I'm assuming, I don't know how long he's going to stream today, but if he's streaming like an hour, I would assume he's wrapping up shortly. Um, that's why I usually start a little after the hour on this 4 o'clock deal. Um, but in any case, so I think I showed you guys last week that I had some Ember Tetras that had babies. Uh, there were two babies. Well, now I've gone and done confused myself because uh, Aquatic Arts, I told them, hey, like three weeks ago, uh, if you have any little weak ember tetras, can I have them and I'll nurse them back to health? Like if they have any ones that just don't look as good or might be coals, I was like, I'll take them and I don't care, just whatever. And so they did that with some half beaks and some ember tetras. And uh, you can see my other ember tetras for them, from them have always become really, really good quality. Uh, but I just uh, wanted, uh, you know, to see if I could, you know, get some things for free, essentially. And I did. So they sent me, I think, 12. <laughs> you know, uh, 10 is what I ordered. And they sent 12, which was rad. I also ordered 10 of these glass blood fin tetras, which I hope to do several episodes on these. Uh, they are a stunning little fish that may need their own uh kind of their own school in here but look at all these little guys schooling they're i mean when you startle them a little bit well these guys aren't that startleable but they get pretty close the ember tetras look pretty nice my wife loves her blue garamis who all hit the deck for some reason don't know why they're afraid of me um and uh these glass fin or glass blood fin tetras uh, are totally peaceful, even though they look kind of like an African tetra. They've got this like gold, blue, green, turquoise like um, organ. It's an air bladder has color to it. Maybe their liver too. I can't tell what it is. It's a big old organ in there. It could be their stomach, I guess. Looks like the air bladder though. And uh, hello, aquapuncture. Welcome. 
Uh, but these little fish are rad. They're from the Amazon. They're really peaceful. They've got this cool trail trailer tail, uh, or fin, I should say, that almost looks like a gonopodium or something. And uh, these guys can withstand, uh, they like a little bit of acidic water, <clears throat> but they can withstand pretty much anything uh, a point and a half uh, of neutral. Plus or minus. Uh, Misfits, thank you so much for joining at the secret supporter level. I, I really appreciate your support long term. I mean, it means a lot. And then also, uh, I mean, you're stepping it up a level too. That's that's very, um, I mean, thank you. It means a lot to me. It's reliable income. And uh, if only we could find out a way so that YouTube didn't take 40%. Uh, and then the tax man took whatever 28 percent oh gosh but it helps so much so thank you so much um how is it secret if you get a shout out well okay it's not so secret carrie oh wait who said that <laughs> master python uh here we are about spilling the secrets we're about uh letting the secrets become known and uh you guys teach me and hopefully I come up with some things to teach you back. Uh, you know, it, it's a reciprocal thing. T-Bone, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it greatly, the little pair that's fist bumping like there's no tomorrow. No problem, man. You information is beyond... Oh, your information is beyond value to me, man. Right on. Thank you so much. Halen Bowler, how's it going? Or Bowler. Uh, I guess I could screw your name up even more ways than I have in the past. But yeah, so these Tetras, I really like them. They seem to loosely shoal. Um, they were really skittish at first. Never kept them before this. Uh, apparently, these are totally full grown. And um, I'm interested in breeding these guys, definitely. Uh, they're really quick when they want to be. But they just, if you've got them under a white light or a light that's over about 6,000K, um, it's gonna, uh, like this light here, which is, um, you know, if you've got it like at the six, five, 5,500 or 6,000, it's probably gonna look, they're probably not gonna look quite as um, sparkly and flashy, but when you've got them kind of at that magic uh, zone, the lights, uh, they definitely sparkle. That vegetative plant growth zone with a little less red in it. If you've got too much red light on, your plants will definitely be flowering and 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 uh, metabolizing the ascotacin in the in the leaves and things, but uh, they won't be sparkling your fish up. Look at that garami hiding under the leaf back there. Kind of funny. It made a little cave. Um, but in any case, yeah. So these were a really fun one. Aquatic Arts has got them right now for like four dollars and ten cents a piece. I think they're a really good deal. I've seen these for as much as twelve dollars a fish locally before. Um, but yeah, definitely a really cool fish. Obviously, everybody knows Ember Tetras are a nice little nano fish. I like these because I can like take them and play musical fish and move them around all over the place if I want to put them in a small one, like uh, say an aquascape. Also, just to check up on them because they're chilling right here, the um, the transvestitis uh, nanochromis doing super well. Here's the female, she's got them gold. Gold plated gills, which is pretty cool. And K499, uh, hang loose, everybody. Right on. Thank you so much. Also, another new fish that I got is one that I'm really excited about from the island of, uh, what is it? Hesh, Hesh, Herm, Hermshmea? Is that how you say it? I'm probably butchering it. It's an Indonesian island, though, and these little guys are a rad stiphodon. You think, Alex, okay, you got like, what, a dozen species of stiphodon? Don't you have enough? Never. So, uh, Zen Ginger, welcome. Uh, so we got some more of the little Stiphodons. I really like them. These ones are called Annie Stiphodon, and they're named, I believe, for the the wife of uh, the guy who discovered them. Um, I'm hoping they'll come forward more again. There's another one on the rock back there. But they came in completely, you'll see in the video that I release in a few days, they came in completely translucent. And now they've got this beautiful blue turquoise metallic jaw and uh, lots of yellow um, spotting on them and uh, kind of this blue iridescence, like cross hatching on them. And these are just called the Annie's Stiphodon or um, Stiphodon Annie. 
Uh, and the males, why won't this freaking focus? Let's see. The males, focus. No, no one wants to focus. The males, anyways, they have a little Kermit the Frog face, which I always love on these gobies. And then the, they also have um, a front dorsal fin that is a spike. So the front and back dorsal fin are split up into two, and uh, they're in a, in a spike. Now, beyond um, other stiphodons, these ones have like a paddle for a tail. And I think they're sold out at Aquatic Arts, but hopefully they're going to try to get more. I heard that they're going to try to get more. Also, little side note, the male Nanochromus is guarding their cave, and that's generally a good sign. However, in the transvestitis Nanochromus, there is a chance that they are uh, switched roles, whereas the male, um, instead of the male guarding the babies, the mother would guard the babies. I don't know how that goes. Um, because the female definitely has the aggressive personality and the bright colors, so it's kind of like a role reversal, hence the name transvestitis. Oh, here we've got another male up here, and, uh, yeah, these guys are just really pretty, the Annie's, uh, Gobi. Um, yeah, I'll try wiping off the camera. I've done that a few times before I started, but let's try it again. It's something with the live stream, just software, I think. Man, I really wish I could get it. Like, if we can get one to land on something a little farther in the tank, it might actually pick up on them better in clarity. But live streams don't ever show color. Um, they've only it, live streams only have 128,000 colors instead of like whatever six million or whatever it is you can have um, on the internet. <laughs> so annoying. Okay, well, they're really small, too, and these guys don't get big. They're one of the smallest siphodon species, uh, and like I said, they've got that paddle tail, so they really are good at swimming. Um, yeah, they're really good at swimming, and in this tank, yeah, it's interesting in that I don't know how the nanochromists are going to treat them, but so far, they've been more just perplexed by what's this creature in my tank than... Like, oh, I'm going to make that my lunch or anything. Um, why? It's like they doesn't want to focus on the yellow on their body. It is like a surreal uh, yellow from the side or orange. It's like a tangerine color. Um, and then the blue is definitely also a metallic color. In any case, I think you get the point of that this is a really pretty fish with some cool highlights of, like, pastel yellow and orange and then it's got some like redder dots too on it and um just a really cool fish so i really am excited about these they eat only biofilm and these ones seem a little more feisty in that that big paddle tail i think is probably an indication that they are fine swimming in the open water more than some of the other fish uh, in the stiphodon species group um but I don't know. I could be wrong, but that just seems to be like my initial observation in the first 48 hours. So, yeah. Um, hey, Jordan. Hey, Steven. Uh, it started with two bettas. What's going on? GG Don. Hello. Um, let's see here. Yeah. So, uh, yes, those are some sweet transvestites from transsexual... Uh, well, not Tanganyika, but that would sure make the song better. Uh, in Bode May Lake. <laughs> in, wait, in, in Dombe. That's what it is. Sweet transvestite from In Dombe Lake. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for those of you uh, as nerdy as myself or older than myself, uh, enjoy that little reference, I hope. Or you just think I'm insane. Okay, so yeah, we've got those those critters. Um, also, if you guys have questions, just just let me know. Um, just let me know, and uh, I'll promptly ignore them. Just try to put the little. Is that the at sign? That's the okay sign. Just put the at sign, um, so that I can see your request. Also, recently. I did all my unboxings with this, um, well, it's getting old and it's been burned and stained, but this has been my Coleman knife for forever. 
uh, I've had it, I don't know, 12 years, for foraging mushrooms, for hunting, for fishing, all that kind of stuff. Love it. Uh, it's just, I don't know why, just this is it. This is the one boot knife. Love it. Always open boxes. Well, not always, but usually with that or a, a scraper for the tank. Well, every time I do that, it's somebody in the comments is like, well, you got to have such a big knife. What are you trying to prove? Everyone always has such a big knife in the unboxings. So I'm working my way up. I got this. <laughs> this is what I opened the last one with. I think I'll get a katana next time. So if anybody knows a good place to get some katanas uh, for opening boxes of fish, I'd appreciate the, uh, the link. All right. Misfits says, any tips on breeding nano rainbow like the Pascai? Rainbow I mentioned earlier. Yeah, so when you say Pascai, this has been a name that has been confused a lot in the U.S. Hold on, let me turn this around. Turn around. These guys, are these what you're talking about? The Luminatus? Pseudomagil Luminatus? Because the reddish ones used to be called Pascai Pseudomagils. Uh, and then there was the Erythina, Erythina Pascai, which was like a Threadfin variant, which... Also, we have thread fins in here. And then there's also the bigger red fish that people talk about. And I don't know for sure um, about that one as much. I should just get a 10 foot long fishing pole and tape a knife to the end. I'm not opposed to that. Um, do they have rain ferris in Seattle? Maybe, wait, Ren... Oh, Renaissance Fair. So I was like, Rainforests? Spelled terribly? Uh, yes, there is a Renaissance Fair in the summer. Um, so hopefully. Also, I just moved this um, Anubius Coffifolia into the um, other goby tank. Uh, the Stiphodon tank. In here, these are cobalt gobies. They're not in their spawning colors. And then back there, that's a birdsong goby. They've got red on them. You've got red on you. Uh, but none of them seem to have the red on them right now either, oddly. So, apparently nobody's happy in this tank right now, which is weird, because I just did a water change. Then we got the micro dragon down there in the algae. Um, and, uh, yeah, so the shrimp, though, are really loving the biofilm on this, on this plant that was in the, uh, this plant was in the uh, these guys i think might have too much calcium you see that splotchiness on their coat either this one's about to shed actually it is see how the feet have little white areas on it uh and the tail too that means that it's starting to loosen up its shell and it'll split right at this worst of the crackling look at their shoulder um and then they'll climb out of it whereas like this one is looking a little better um, actually it looks a lot better. Okay. I thought for a minute that maybe I had too much calcium going in this water. But yeah, so all the female stiphodons of, in this tank, well there's a male, um, uh, neon gold one back there. But all the females are just hanging out doing their thing. Um, let's see if we can, we can probably feed the fish too and get them to, to, to get a little more lively. But, um, as far as spawning any rainbow fish, to answer that question... I like this. Um, watch all these shrimp just scatter. I like this. I take inflow, outflow pipes, any sort of pipe that I can that's just a hook over, and I grow moss onto it. I, I graft the moss onto it or rubber band it around there. And uh, then I'll use, like, this is Marimo moss ball on all this, so it's less of an issue as far as, like, they don't really like laying their eggs in this. There's not enough protection. They will use the bulbitis here, and sometimes I'll pull that out. But for the most part, they're going to go for the moss up at water level, both it being high and that. Now, the best way to do it is to not do a water change for a week and a half or a little longer than normal. With rainbow fish, I like to do two water changes a week of a lot of water. Uh, and then... You do that water change and like boom, you do the water change and you give them some live Daphnia or bloodworms or seed shrimp or whatever it is for the size of the rainbow fish and they go wild. They tend to spawn in the mornings. So I like to do that either late at night I'll do the water change and they'll spawn in the morning or do it early uh, in the morning like at, before the lights are even on if I know I want to get them to spawn they will do that. Um, 
Uh, Misfits, can they stay in the tank with Fry? Uh, that is not really a great idea. Um, these guys, some of the smaller Pseudomagills are okay with their Fry. Um, I mean, the, 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 the technical answer, yes. Like in, say, this tank here, or this tank here, if you had a 40 gallon breeder that was really planted up, yeah, then they'd be fine with their babies. Um, here, by the way, here's the Praycox, so another micro or dwarf or nano, whatever you want to call it, um, rainbow fish. There's a male with the red tail and the female with the yellow, um, and they're in here. This is an experiment tank. Believe it or not, there's still, um, there's still, uh, uh, what are they called? spacing now uh the gold nebula shrimp in with them and you can see their beautiful blue iridescence uh under certain angles of light right up close that it doesn't show off so well but they're in here with uh five pea puffers and the pea puffers are doing well they're eating all the snails i give them and uh yeah they're doing well uh but as far as those babies go um i recommend putting them in their own tank also with rainbow fish they're jumpers so this would be a bad setup for them in that sense, but for the fry, the fry would do great in this, especially if you've got moss, java moss, Christmas moss, any of that that's been under medium light, so it's like dark color and slow growing. Uh, it gets real dense, kind of like an afro or something. Um, that is like the best uh, for growing um, the babies. I mean, water lettuce, uh, you know, frog bit, salvinia, any of that stuff works pretty well too. Um, especially like, you know, when you get it all rooty like this, the babies will hide in there. But yeah, the parents will eat them. They're pretty hardcore that way. Um, let me show you real quick here. This is my new, um, my new male from Aquatic Arts also. I asked them for the cheapest kind of beta because I wanted to show, uh, you guys, viewers, like when you s say, I want a random beta, this is what they will send you. Something like this. I mean, it might be other colors. You can make a note of what color you want, but I literally um, asked them to do it like not through my normal guy or the gal who works with marketing, but just like pass it on through the shipping department. Like we did it as an experiment to see like how good the shipping would be, the quality, all that kind of stuff. Hey, she's laying eggs. Look at this. She's got an egg coming out of her, of her uh, ovipositor as we speak. Um... Interesting. She should just drop it. They're not egg stickies uh, or sticky egg layers. Um, but yeah, long thin uh, leopard daniel, which is really just the um, domestic uh, zebra daniel or zebra daniel, if you will. Okay, so then the other thing that I got um, recently are these, which are double platinum uh, or platinum double red or double orange, sorry, cockatoides. Um, Apistos, so I got a male and a female, and uh, from Aquatic Arts, these were the cheapest Apisto they had, and they were on sale for 30% off, so I got them, and I put them in a 10-gallon, they got a little hut, and uh, I jump-cycled their tank, so hopefully they do well, um, I need to get another light uh, for the plants and so forth, but I mean, so far, um, one bar is kind of going over these, and I need to get, I should just get like a Fluval 3.0 four-footer, for each shelf, honestly, because this is stupid. I don't know what, what I'm doing. Um, also, they don't grow plants well. But then these were the other, like, killer buy that was, like, six bucks, I want to say. And, um, like, per fish. A lot of times when I'm on their site, I'm like, I'm not paying $27 for a fish. And then, like, I look at it again, and it's for, like, three or five or whatever. Um, but here, hold on. Let me get them to come around. This is cloudy because I just changed the water before the stream started. But these are called the uh, High Rise Sun Kiss uh, Platties. And they've got this crazy, crazy uh, fin on them. There's the female. But then the males, there's another female there too. Then the male um, has even longer. And they've got almost green and blue colors in it. And all the way to, like, cream, they're a little stressed right now, but, l I mean, look at the colors. Come on. Look at the color uh, and, and stuff on these. I'm really excited. I don't think these will stay in this tank long term. I'm watching their fins really closely to make sure that nobody's bugging them because there's these baby angelfish in here. There's baby metallic angelfish. 
trying to eat my shrimp, which is fine. Uh, and then there's also the other uh, Stifodons I ordered, which are the, um, the... These guys are more widespread. These are the green and black riffle stiphodons they're like the palawan riffle stiphodons but these are from um polynesia micronesia and you can see that the males have this iridescent green that's really cool um and then their body has again a pretty good sized paddle tail a little bit broader head and then uh the males don't have a stripe down the side uh the they've got that that spike front dorsal fin so here's a male um this is, oh boy, this is the uh, Palawan Riffle Gobi, whereas this is the green and black Riffle Gobi. Their territories overlap a bit, um, and when stressed, they actually color up really differently, um, but they don't, they all look just like silver when they're hanging out. And so I'm really actually happy that their color's looking good, even though the water's looking cloudy at the moment. Here comes another one right here. We got a few. There's that female with the striped line on her. Um, if you could make any of that out. And then also we got more of the red whiptail lizard cats, which new genetic information coming out has traced down which species they are. I'll have to make a video just on that. Um, but they, uh, we knew that they weren't a wild species. We knew that they were a tank bred species and or a wild hybrid um which i guess that would be wild i'm sorry but we knew that they didn't just exist in the red morph on their own they're usually kind of a brown or a black and um now they've kind of figured out which which species or which phenotypes had gotten together to do that also i just want to point out that my malawa shrimp in this tank the blue ones are looking really blue a uh, really nice sky blue on them. I mean, just looking great. It's taken years and years to try to get Malawas to actually hold color through the generations. But they're doing it. And um, I know this is an odd setup because we also have an Episto Panduro or Pandorini and another Episto, uh, well, female and a male. And then we've got the eight or nine uh, Siphodons that need the biofilm to graze on of all the rocks and things. Then we have three red lizard cats we have two of the metallic black um uh black uh pfft, angelfish duh alex and then the the platies that are hiding the four platies two males two females uh and all the shrimp i mean there's just a ton of shrimp in here okay let's see here um thank you so much uh plants and fish says just signed up to support you through patreon hopefully they don't take 40 percent they don't. Um, oh, here's a neon gold one that's out, um, a male. Again, see that spike in the dorsal? That's pretty much universal in their um, males. And um, blue head, very common also in Stiphodon species. Also, we've got a Borneo sucker loach that has decided to come out, spotted loach. They've got a beautiful iridescent blue tail on the males, and I really like that. And then stripes on the tail, dots on the face. The females have more stripes everywhere. Um, that's one I'd really love to breed. But from what I've read, you need a tank that is turning over something like uh, 15 to 30 times the, the tank, uh, the total tank volume in an hour. Um, the bird song gobies in here, uh, they're starting to actually show a little more red. They probably see me and think that I'm going to feed them, so that's probably what's going on. Uh, even though they eat biofilm, they still get excited for feeding time. I think it just kind of amps everybody up. Um, but yeah, so there's that going on. And then there's the micro, um, the, the Taiwanese micro dragon goby. There's a very low grade, like wild almost, red cherry shrimp. Um, so yeah. But in any case, the thing that I really like about gobies and why I've pretty much bought in everything that aquatic arts sells as far as gobies go is they only live two years, which is a, a downer to some people. But to me, with this channel, I feel like I get to show you guys about the fish. The fish gets to have its, like, you know, natural lifespan. Um, I get to take care of it. Usually you can get them, I mean, in the wild, a year to two years is normal. In captivity, two to three is more normal. So you can really actually kind of extend their, their natural life. And then also you can just watch them. They'll spawn in captivity. So all these 
these guys love spawning and they'll color up and they'll spawn for you like those ones in the other room, the Annie's ones, uh, the Annie, Siphodon Annie A. They were spawning last night, the, first, the second night they've been here, uh, they were spawning. And same with the bird songs, same with these, um, these uh, neon gold ones. Uh, they, they've all spawned for me, but they, they need salt water for the larva to be washed out to, to, to uh, the ocean and the salt water to survive. So they don't actually come to term with their babies, basically. So that makes it so um, I can mix and match species, and yes, it might be hybridizing in embryotic form, but nothing survives beyond that. Plus, they eat biofilm like there's no tomorrow, and algae, which is nice, uh, and they're just in insanely peaceful. For the most part, there's a few bigger ones, like the orange fin ones, that I'd say be a little careful with, like the orange fin ones or the... Um, blue belly ones or the red tail ones uh, they're all a little bit more um, chompy they'll eat baby shrimp or medium-sized shrimp they'll attempt to eat but I mean look at the size of the mouth on this they can eat like day-old shrimp and that's about it they're they're not they're not a threat anything in your tank usually um, even like and the other thing is they, they usually stay pretty low in the tank so they're great for fry like if I wanted to clear all these rainbows out up here and just let the spawning mop uh, for these rainbows, both the thread fins and the other rainbows, I could totally let it just um, hatch, and these guys aren't going to bug it in the least. They don't all hunt for eggs or anything either. They basically just want little micro crustaceans we can't see, and uh, that's about it, really. Uh, all right, hold on. Let me catch up on chat. I feel like I've neglected y'all. Um, this is my oldest tank again, probably, or second oldest. This is the Blue Dream and the um, Panda Loach. These are the North Fork Panda Loaches. Since people ask, Alex, how do you have two-year-old Panda Loaches that haven't turned yellow and brown uh, and still have the cool patterns? It's the North Fork uh, collection point of their river in Yuan Province. There are two collection points. The lower collection point, they turn color. Also, keeping them in good health and never letting the ammonia get high uh, really, really helps. So having a species-only tank, maybe some shrimp, that helps. The Blue Dreams in here originally are the Lucas Brett's world's greatest blue dream line that won the uh, the competition in uh, Aquatic uh, Experience 2017 or 18. And uh, I've been working that line since that competition, basically. I added them to an existing line I had from him and so on which I did the art for him too. Do biofilm eating fish like shrimp bacteria powders? Uh, Master Python, that's a good question. You know, I'm not really sure. I can't ex conclusively say that, that they do or that that's enough for them. I don't think it hurts anything and they seem to kind of like graze and, and nibble a little bit more on broadleaf plants and the glass when that's the case. Definitely plecos and loricaridae or... Um, uh, various catfish, oddball catfish, twig catfish, things like that um, seem to, uh, and that's good. But with the Bacter AE and stuff like that, I haven't necessarily seen a huge improvement in anything, I mean, a huge increase in much other than like, oh, look, I've got a million baby snails now. Um, <laughs> that happens sometimes. But look at the, the them grazing while they don't think I'm looking at them uh, on the algae. I mean, they're quick. They're methodic, and they'll go one leaf uh, section at a time, and then they'll just peace out. But, yeah, they do their little nibble-nibble lawnmower thing, uh, and they're just they're just a really cool fish to watch. That, and they can climb. They shouldn't be in a, t a topless tank, but the trick is they're in the cleanest water by far, and they sense clean water, and O2... Um, or not O2, sorry about that, ozone. And ozone and negative ions are produced by waterfalls. And so unless you have a big drop where water is particulate and then hits more water, collides uh, energetically, you don't need to worry so much um, about that being created. Um, but if you have a fountain or really heavy, like down here, this is a pretty heavy, this is a 75 gallon um, hang off the back that's kind of supercharged the way I wanted it. 
these can definitely produce the negative ions, which in themselves, like I don't want to say that they do any hippie mumbo jumbo like for you. The negative ion thing, some people are all about like, oh, it makes salt, you know, salt lamps do this or that or waterfalls do this or that. I, you can read the research on it and make your own conclusions. But what is conclusive is that fish like snakeheads and walking catfish and gobies can smell that and they know to go towards it. So if they're in stagnant water, they know that that means there's moving water. And that's what usually causes them to jump other than being chased. Being chased can also uh, do it. Um, if anybody has any questions while I'm going to more of these fish, just let me know. Um, I, if I miss something, I'm sorry. I'm back down near the bottom, which means I skipped over all of y'all. Uh, and a lot of times I go back and watch these uh, chats later uh, and you know appreciate it after the fact but misfits again thank you so much I saw that super chat too so super chat and you upped your membership really I do uh, I really do appreciate it buddy um, Alshon how does one know if panda loach is that one and change color I'm not sure most local fish stores will have a clue yeah that's that's pretty true um I had to specially ask, and then I had to find out by looking on Google Maps. Uh, I found the river they live in, according to, you know, Seriously Fish. I've kept a lot of different groups of panda loaches over the years and tried to breed them several times. They're really hard fish to breed in captivity. Um, and what happened was I figured it out by reading some forums and people saying, oh, there's a little slight difference in the two rivers because one has a waterfall. Them being loaches, they can get up a 350 foot waterfall. And even though they can go up and down the waterfall okay, it does seem to separate the populations. And because of that, um, you get the difference. And so what you wanna look for, honestly, is the collection point. If, if they came out of Thailand or Indonesia, they're not gonna be the, um, the ones from the northern part. Those will be the lower part because they're smuggled out through either Thailand or uh, Burma, Myanmar. Right now they're not going to be smuggled out through Myanmar because there's a war going on. But, and also a bunch of drug dealers that right now are not probably interested in fish. Uh, but in traditional um, circles, coming out of Hong Kong or being sold to Singapore or Japan the Chinese traders on the river that actually sell um, southern, southeastern and southern Chinese fish, they will sell it within Taiwan, um, Hong Kong, and Singapore. So that tends to be, if you can find them from those sources, you'll tend to get the ones that are that way. Now that took a lot of digging and there might be some you know, uh, catch to that, but from what I've gathered, that's the case. And that's what, where I went out of my way to source these and why I didn't buy anything else until then. And also, uh, I should say that the aquatic arts ones that I bought, um, specifically, I think those ones had come from Hong Kong that time. But they do source things from different places at different times. So you can always email them and ask. Uh, and that's what's nice about people online. Sometimes they know better because they're actually doing in bulk, like Wet Spot, uh, Flip Aquatics, whoever it may be, they'll know... Um, they'll know because they're actually paying to import the fish usually and so they know that they talk to a guy in indonesia or dan's fish you know he knows the guy in nigeria that he's importing from he can ask him uh whereas people who have a local fish shop they're gonna buy it from a wholesaler they may buy it from a trans shipper but a lot of time trans shippers don't care or know or care to know okay so Let's see here. What else? Um, how are the half beaks doing? Yeah, the half beaks are doing great. I got more half beaks. Oh, I'm not pointed at them. Got more half beaks. They're all hanging out in this tank. They're all the gold wrestling half beaks, which I think are the hardiest. Um, oh, here comes one to say hello. Let's let's take a look under the water. Uh, who lives in the 40 breeder? under the sea oh no one smashed his nose and that is so common they hurt their nose all the time like dummies and they'll they'll just collide full speed into the tank and bend their their it's actually not their nose it's their jaw um but they're doing well um 
I got three more this round. I basically just said, uh, I don't care if they're sick. I know if you wouldn't sell them to the public, we've got uh, an agreement. Um, send them my way. And he's like, well, they're not sick. They're just really uh, anemic. They're real skinny. Um, like this one back here was one of them. And I was like, well, send them my way. I'll, I specialize in making sick and gimpy fish uh, better. So um, that's... That's what they did, and they're like, well, I mean, don't show it off as, like, our best, you know, our best material sort of thing, please. So, just so you guys know, that that these are, uh, their half beaks, uh, these weren't being sold. These were in the, uh, don't sell group slash send home with an employee or, uh, whatever. Um, and I got them, and now most of them are doing really well. I think we've got seven or eight now let's see but they really like this floating um this is just and i like this because it's catching any algae that's grown when you got all sand substrate algae is like inevitable uh if you've got high nitrates or i mean nitrates that rise and fall and uh, by high i just mean like 40 like they go up and down and you gotta do your water changes to keep on top of them all that but this stuff will catch all this filamentous algae. See all this nasty pain in the butt stuff? It'll catch it all growing up top here when you got a strong, like, Fluval 3.0 type light or, you know, a Twin Star or Castle or anything like that. Um, it'll catch it, and then you can literally just grab it and pull it right off and roll it up kind of around your finger. And uh, then you don't have to deal with it growing low in the tank like on the bottom or on your other plants you can actually grow some other plants like the the hair grasses and things in here and the uh, potomac eaton gayi uh pantanal uh native and then we've got our happy happy dappy little uh um well, and look at that one over there the female hold on let's move some stuff uh the female what is she doing she's like She's doing this little wiggly thing. See the bright yellow female over on the rock? She's doing this little weird wiggly, like, enticing dance, but I don't know for who. The male's up over here. Now, these are Episto, um, Episto, uh, Ncia? I never say it right. Look like Ningensis. It's a Dutch word, and I always screw it up. T-Bone, thank you so much for the $2 super chat. I appreciate you. You rock. Hey, Dan Butts, what's up? Um, let's see, Alex, would half beaks be a good, uh, good to tub outside? If you live in a hot area, Texas, uh, uh, or Florida, Southern California, yeah, you could get away with doing half beaks outside, definitely. And they're live bears, which is really fun. Uh, they have, like, two to five, six, seven babies, depending on the species. Uh, all but one, the Celebi half beak, um, from, what, is it... I can't remember if they're from, I think they're from Lake Sulawesi, uh, but they don't, they lay eggs, oddly. They, they literally evolve the ability to lay eggs, then they evolve, evolve the ability to lay live birth, then they re-evolve the ability to lay eggs. Very confusing evolution uh, pathway. But these ones, these are live bears, the golden wrestling half beaks. They fight these also like... Uh, ooh, look at the, the nose on that male. Boy. And the red down on the bottom. Man, he's he's a, he's a fighter, this one. They, they're they called wrestling half beaks, too, because they wrap up around each other. And uh, they do this kind of alligator death roll thing. They don't hurt each other. But then they'll also lock jaw. Uh, like, they'll, the males will wrap their jaw around one another. And that's what that nose is, is it's jaw. And, uh, yeah. And then we've got the Gertrude rainbows up here, um, Pseudomagills again. Uh, we've got, now, what I was really looking for on our, in the new, new to the tank, that is, um, and I don't know if we'll find it, the, actually the last place I saw it, let's see if I'm right, this is going to blow my mind and your minds if I'm right here. Uh, we had a banjo catfish that buried itself oh, oh 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 score mind blown it did that yesterday 
And we've got a banjo catfish sleeping. They're nocturnal, these ones more. But one of my banjo catfish is sleeping in the sand. Watch it bury itself again, if it will. It's like half asleep right now. Come on, buddy. It'll play dead for a second when I let go. It'll probably like bury itself quickly. <laughs> you do your thing, buddy. Let's see if it'll bury itself again. There it goes. <laughs> so, uh, they're kind of funny. They don't do much, but they're really funny to, to play with. Uh, and I guess it can breathe okay under there. I don't know. Uh, it's been, <laughs> it's been under there all night. Uh, but that's where they all went. As soon as I got them, they all just went for sand. Uh, and those are the lovely banjo catfish. Uh, if you've got enough sand, they will do that. Uh, it'll also, this sand also has lots of little snails and, um, seed shrimp and scuds and stuff. And so, um, yeah, it, they, they have, uh, they move kind of tremors like and go look for food under there. Uh, do the males duel? Is that what you're asking? Uh, yes. Uh, how ba big do the banjos get? Maybe three and a half, four inches. Not that big. Uh, and they've got a big long tail. So there's the green or blue phantom pleco back there. Uh... Oh, cool. Jerry says the banjos start coming out during the day after a while. They start looking like little leopard sharks. Totally. Yeah, when they swim around the bottom, I've seen them at, like, um, when I worked at fish stores and stuff, I've seen them do that, uh, definitely. And they're they're really fun to watch. Um, the mormorids are also in here still. I don't know if I'm pushing the level of stalking in here yet because there's, uh, let's see here, maybe 20 quarries of various species Two young plecos, two corridoras, uh, eight half beaks. This is now. This is all a a uh, forty breeder. Um, so I think I'm okay still. It's just you know it's hard to know because some fish make such a mess, um, and those fish include all these catfish species as well as and then mormorids just need really clean water. Um, but like see here, there we've got the um, apista. Well, sorry, <laughs> Epis, um, yeah, hold on, sorry guys, my gimbal got screwed up, uh, yeah, the, uh, these guys right here, the, um, I want to say Epistogramma, that's not their name, the Aspidora Spiloides, uh, used to be C-125s, these guys, um, they're teeny, they're kind of like Corydora uh, Hebrosis or something. And then we've also got the Venezuelan quarries. And then we've got the quarries that occupy midwater, which are the pepper quarries. And then on top of that, um, and I mean, there's probably, oh, look at this. There's actually some mom worth sucking up. Uh, oh, it's leaves. It's from the leaves that I put in there. From the Catapa leaves. I just wanted to show you guys the Mormorids. They're my newest fascination the last few months. I don't bug them when they're not on film. I just passively watch them. But um, I'm just transfixed by them. I love them. Uh, let's see here. Uh, they're so fun. And I want to get more species. And I'm re literally willing to get bigger tanks in the house. Just to get more mormorids uh can you guys see them the elephant nose fish that just swam by uh there's two here comes the big female right here now it would hard it'd be hard to know if it was female or male but when i bought these two they'd paired off in the store and um the owner has kept fish for 30 some years and and his take was that female and male uh the male is back over here and all black, whereas the female has more markings uh, of gray and tan and stuff. There goes the <laughs> the peppercories go zooming by. And, uh, yeah, so in any case, yeah, everything is going well in here. Um, no issues of ick or any trouble. No, I didn't quarantine anybody, um, which many people do. And also, we haven't gone outside yet. Also, the bird song. 
<sighs> have they colored up their blood red? Well, you guys have seen them in their blood red uh, attire when they're spawning. They're real pretty when they do that. Um, but again, they don't have the big paddle tails that, that those other ones do that, that swim a lot more. Then also we've got guppies that are from... These are outdoor guppies usually in here. They're in real black water, even though it's hard black water. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but it's a thing. And then over here, this is more like green water. I need to get lights for up here that are cool, like just a low power LED. By the way, look at these platies. Look at that male now that like I'm not chasing them. And it's still not colored up like to the point where it's just chilling, but um, just a really pretty one. I really hope they spawn for me. Um, oh, and then the other schooling fish that I got before we hop outside is, uh, I got more of the African, let me use my other turkey baster here, um, more of the African nine bar, uh, barbs, which I love. These guys are rad. Um, Apparently, they don't want to come out either, but they are really cool little fish, and, uh, hold on, let's clean up this dead whatever that is, eh, into the bucket. Um, let's see, they're right down in here, so maybe we can just chill for a second, we'll see one. They are really skittish, so of course I was a dummy and put them in the most planted tank, but there's one over there on the right. Um, but they're just a really pretty fish. Something is dripping on me from above. Oh. Thank goodness, it's nothing important. <laughs> it's this net. <sighs> All right. But yeah, these guys are cool. They've actually got a little bit of green and blue in the top of that fin and then down on their body. So if you go to the Aquatic Arts website and look at them, you'll see them. They're, I think they're sold out too. Go figure. Um, oh yeah, but so I got her or him uh, this this like $5.99 beta. And then I also got um, over with my Samurai Garamis, I got another beta. Where's she at? She's uh, who I'm hoping to breed with that one I just showed you. Because um, it's all males in that tank. These are all the... Uh, so here, female Samurai Garami. You can, they're real bold. Like, they're not scared of me. And then these are the ones that had ick a few months... Like, two months ago. Another female. See the rainbow glimmers on them? And then a male. Black and white. Black and white over there. That's male with the black, white, and gray. Um, where is the beta? She might be hiding down in the Sawasser Tong, probably. Oh, wait, is this her? No, this is the Nanakaras. All right, whatever. She's in there somewhere. Um, and then the other ones that uh, I haven't showed off a ton are the Satan Spawn fish that, that Kenny frickin' brought me. These, uh, they're starting to get their red a little bit now. But these are the Turkana cichlids. And these things are freaking mean. They ate all the baby, all the baby anything in this tank. And I'm going to have to get them out of here because they're going to be mean to my balloon rams too. The balloon ram, These are the rescue rams from Petco. Or PetSmart, I should say. Um, but I'm going to move them. They need their own tank because they're freaking savage monsters. Speaking of savage monsters... The little uh, micro dragons up on a high perch, which is unusual. Usually that's not the, the case. Uh, let's see here. Uh, all right. Let me... Are mormorids nocturnal? Yeah, mostly they are. Not, necessar not necessarily are they just nocturnal, but they're, um, they're... Oh, it was raining outside. I guess I need shoes. Uh, they're, they're in muddy water in the Nile, the Blue Nile, and the White Nile, and, and lakes, Oxbow lakes and things that have connected from there over the eons, and, uh, like the baby whales and the baby dolphin ones, less so, I believe, but the, the big old elephant nose mormorids 
tend to hide out. I mean, they'll come out and do a round or two in the day. But they tend to be searching for grubs, worms, things like that. And that's, uh, they, they can do that just as well at night, but not face any predation. So unless they've got really good cover or really cloudy water with a really high TDS, but it can't be any ammonia. So it's gotta be a total, like a, a TDS that's very um, mud oriented essentially. Uh, then, then they're not going to come out in the day as much. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Corys are cool. Okay, I don't want to argue, but please tell me why they're cool. They're fish for little girls, and I'm 16-year-old man. Sorry, but I like real fish. Dude, Corys are awesome. There are 860-some known species of Corys. Uh, they clean up the garbage that gets left by other fish. Uh, they've been around for six, six, 64 million years, which dates right to the time of the impact uh, at the KT boundary with the dinosaurs uh, ending, and they survived that, and then they probably survived longer, I mean, they've been around longer than that, that's just the oldest fossil, uh, and they looked almost identically the same, so they got their body shape down, and there are, you know, brooches, larger size quarries, but... There are also, you know, teeny ones and aspidoras, which are smaller size ones. And I think they're very fun. Um, but in any case, <laughs> Stephen, I'm 35, full of testosterone. Corys are cutie patooties. Yeah, I'm 35, and I'm. Uh, I think they're cutie patooties. I think that they're very interesting. Uh, in any case, let's see here. Xanadu, hello, hello, hello. Hey, Xanadu, what's up? Um, I wish I could do uh, better close-ups, Dan, but my phone has been pissing me off all day, and that was uh, one of the issues was focus and zooming in. Uh, yeah, Corys are a Jurassic fish, actually, and that means that they actually were a part of the Amazon River before it was the Amazon, and when it was back attached to Africa. So they're actually part of tertiary land mass... Uh, what do they call it? Teratype? I might do I might link to someone else who's covered that really well. Like there's an archaeology channel that's covered it well. But essentially, all throughout history, the continents have moved. And when they move, only so many uh critters get over that, you know, whatever it, from when it was connected. And then they either start to die out or evolve. And there's times throughout history where like North and South America weren't connected. So they have different creatures. Then they connected again. So then they start to share some creatures. Then they disconnect again. So they have this kind of weird, like they're a partial connection, but then there's places like Africa and um, Australia that have been totally disconnected. And if you go back farther than that, um, it, you might notice that life is very, very different from the Great Plains of North America over and if you follow the Great Plains in Texas, kind of straight down into Mexico, the Yucatan Peninsula and the Central Valley in Mexico, where Mexico City is, everything to the east of Mexico City, there was actually an inland ocean that came in there and that went up into the Great Lakes for like 20 million years. And so North America has a major split. Appalachia and the Rockies were the two high points, and they were separate continents for a while. If you look for a map that plays back the known geology as we understand it now of plate tectonics, you can actually see them splitting up and then reforming, coming together, subduction zones versus um, the subduction versus, what is it? Subduction and conver convergent zones? Is that? I feel like that's not the right word. Why am I spacing? Whatever. Where mountains form, the Himalayas. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of interesting in, in that sense, uh, that you can see that. All right, let's look at, um, let's look at a couple of things I got. <laughs> Abduction. Uh, this is cool, but your pizza squirrel might be cooler. I agree. So, you know what? I, I, I was at the park yesterday and that squirrel ran down from a tree. I was parked in my truck and I was going to meet my wife. And uh, we were going to go just sit by the lake and hang out. And this squirrel comes running down a tree with almost a full piece of pizza. Like all but, I don't know, a quarter of a piece of pizza in his mouth. 
and he's bounding like jumping and the pizza's flopping and it just looks so funny and I'm like scrambling to get my phone and finally I get my phone and I kind of catch part of it and he's like kind of perched right in front of my truck uh, and then he just takes off into the bushes but it has nothing to do with this channel or fish I just uploaded it because I remember pizza rat and well convection is going on Stephen uh, definitely in the mantle and in the earth um, I'm just trying to think of it's not collision zone it's uh, yeah I'd fail geology right now subduction and whatever I don't care where they come together a uh, combination uh, whatever okay whatever move on Alex uh, but in any case yes I was thinking that people would get a kick out of pizza squirrel and like I think 400 people did it's like 17 seconds long it's not hard to enjoy uh, but yeah nobody nobody liked that video apparently which surprised me I thought it'd be I thought it was entertaining it was like pizza rat um, my wife said no more tanks in the house so I got a porch pawn neither a tank nor a house checkmate randy you are a brilliant man sir i have done the same thing uh no more tanks in the house okay i got rubbermaid containers i got trash cans i got uh these things she said why don't you class it up so i said okay i'll get some oak barrels and she said i don't want oak barrels so i said okay i'll get some fake oak barrels so i got some fake oak barrels uh, but in any case what i got i got some more uh red cap rice fish i think i'm the one who bought them out of their last ones for now man the water is really cold today it's got to be 55 or 60 degrees and it was like 86 two days ago drives me nuts it's gonna kill my fish it's gonna piss me off uh and then check these out these are just incredible i hope you guys can see the blue iridescence on these you know how bad color is on my camera but look right there these are the madaka yoki oh wait no i want mayuki mayuki uh, rice fish from Japan imported in and they are just this they just glow blue um, I mean they look like a neon or LED light was flicked on even in this diffuse overcast day they are just incredible they're super super cool uh, so I got seven of those they were a little pricey so I really hope they breed um, I might move them it back inside literally just to get them to breed at a hotter temperature <laughs> um when it gets too cold i bring most of my fish in uh most of the fish will be okay in like this kind of cold like down to 50 degrees these rice fish will be fine even into freezing the ones i'm worried about are these so i've got a couple in here we've got a couple uh hold on we'll move things around We've got some marsh killifish that I got. And then we also got a couple of my guppies from last year that were outdoor guppies that were inside. In those tanks up on the top shelf, that's this same line with the really pretty blue. Being exposed to the sun really makes iridescence in these guys uh, develop better. They, they, I mean, they, they learn their body learns to use it. Plus the vitamin D, you cannot get into their diet. They have to absorb it through their skin, um, in a certain organic arrangement. Now, I'm not smart enough to know what that arrangement is. I just remember reading it at one point. Uh, and humans are much the same in that we need to absorb vitamin D um, through our skin uh, if we want certain configurations of it. Now, down here we also have. Um, red-faced top minnows. That's what's in here. And they're another killifish. They're a fungulus fish. Um, we've got the orange uh, the orange uh, Madaka rice fish over here. So we got a little bit of everything going on. And then we've got the, it's starting to rain. Um, we've got the, the, the peach creamsicle ones from earlier. Which are really just me breeding the uh, the uh, pearl scale with the orange ones, uh, with the gold ones. Uh, to show you guys, it's a weird day. So, blue sky, and then it's raining pretty good here. Uh, big drops of rain. 
it might be a thunder kind of day. I should probably not be out here with my luck of lightning. But, uh, yeah. You know, I wish I was duckweed free for uh, two years. Although, the duckweed really, really helps the nitrates. Especially in those outside tubs where it can spike quickly. If I had bigger tubs, troughs, then I wouldn't have any. But since they're only 12 or 14 gallons totally full to the brim, 14 totally full, so they're like 12 and a half gallons, I like it. It's a buffer. It, it assures me that I'm not going to uh, kill my fish. <laughs> well, it doesn't assure me that of that, but it helps. All right, let's see here. <laughs> Mark, oh man, you cut me up. Uh, I have to be the dissenting voice here and say that the history of the earth and the movement of species is more interesting than a scavenging rodent. Yeah, I agree. Uh, how are my vegetables doing? Well, I've kind of slacked on building the vegetable garden for my wife. I did, uh, I did clear out all the blackberry bushes that were coming over the fence and the English ivy. And then I also cleared out that whole area back there. And then I made her a bed over there. I don't know if you saw it along the fence. So she does have a place to plant like her tomatoes, but we don't have a full raised bed garden. Also over here, I've been working on cleaning this up for her. Um, but there is an old raised bed in there that can put some dirt in. This is kind of half sun, sun in the front here. But she could definitely put some, like, uh, even beans or something would actually work out here. It gets enough light for that. We've definitely had some volunteer beans out in here already showing up. But I'll have to get some starts because obviously starting from seed this year isn't going to be practical. But um, you can see how it's raining with the sun and everything right now. And then I think we're going to yank out this big shrub. I don't want it here. And there's this ugly chain link fence in there. Whatever. Doesn't have to do with fish. But uh, I might put a pond in the front over here. Just like a little koi pond. Or even in that where that bed is. If she doesn't want that bed. Uh, so, yeah. All things on the agenda. As well as the pond out back. Seems like the pond out back is realistically going to take me till next season to do or maybe the fall like when I'm allowed to dig up the yard and kill everything rather than now when she wants it to be pretty for her friends who come over for barbecues and whatnot um let's see here all right let me get back to things Alyssa what's going on uh oh uh Duckweed free for four years, all of a sudden, boom, it's all over. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things. Got to be careful with uh, who you uh, get in the pool with, right? Uh, I got some duckweed to grow to feed my chickens, and uh, <laughs> they won't eat it, huh? Um, I used to, so, can pygmy sunfish be kept in tubs? 100%. Pygmy sunfish don't need moving water. They don't need, they don't need anything. Just, you can put them in a freaking mason jar. Just fill that baby with moss. Mm, add a little bit of calcium to the water, a little bit of leaf debris so it kind of breaks even to a slightly acidic ideally, but it has a slight TDS. Uh, and uh, ideally you want it to be aged water or wild water that has microorganisms in it, and then that way you've got the food in there too. But uh, yeah. Uh, ML says, uh, love your collaboration with Bentley. We need to see more of you two guys. Oh, well, thanks. Bentley's one of my best friends. Uh, Alyssa is also a good friend of mine here in the Northwest. We're all buddies um, in the Northwest. Jason from Redfish Bluefish is another one. Um, there is another guy that uh, ended up moving, but he was involved a lot of the time. My friend Ben also uh, used to be on the channel a lot. But Bentley's, I went and toured Bentley's house because he was the first guy I knew who had a fish room that I was like allowed to tour and film his rainbow fish room and he had a channel with a few videos just kind of like for self diarying more but it was really that that thing that kind of kicked off my channel being more of like a consistent channel and his channel being kind of born and then him later I mean he just got more and more serious with the content he was creating but we're kind of like linked at, at uh, 
<laughs> in our mythos uh, as channels, um, we're definitely linked to one another uh, by that, that being my, fi my first tour outside my own collection. Uh, and then Jason also having a store up north and everything, yeah. Uh, how come so much big fish keepers and YouTubers all up in Washington? Well, we have a lot of tech up in Washington. I don't know why there's a chunk of us up here. I mean, there's a lot of YouTubers everywhere, but I mean, like Bob Steenfot's another person that I love talking to and chatting with, who's up here. Obviously, Corey from Aquarium Co-op, um, Jimmy Gimbal, but he's not from here, um, or or Jimmy Swiskey, whatever, however you know him. Um, but yeah, Jimmy's a great guy, and then um, Alyssa and Corvus Oskin. Uh, Joel, as is known by me. Um, and then there's Fish, uh, or Aquarium po Guy Podcasts. No, Aquarium Podcasts. Randy's deal, but he works for Corey now, too. Uh, or has for a while. And then, um, who else is up here? I guess, uh, um, uh, Aquapros is kind of up here, too. Mike. I mean, he's in Oregon. And then Kenny's in Oregon. Um, uh, Atkins Nature Aquatics is. Um, let's see, who else? Friday Fish Facts is up in Canada. So yeah, we got a lot of people. Um, Girl Talks Fish works for Corey. Yeah, but she, and I love her channel actually, um, Speak of the Devil, but um, she's nowhere near here. Although Candy just moved out here, um, who's basically been his mod for ever you know you guys know candy um so yeah i'm trying to think but uh yeah there's a lot uh son of quack i think because of tech companies uh we have the best ever fish club yeah definitely we we have um we have the biggest last time i heard fish club in the country as far as money goes and then also close to numbers usually that fluctuates but usually we have 2,000, like 1,500 active members or something like that, 2,000 coming and going. And then, um, I mean, the money we've made, I don't think we're supposed to talk about like publicly. You might have to do a freedom of information. But let me just put it out there and say it's stupid. This, it's a stupid amount of money. We had auctions, to uh, the, the auction two years ago doubled any other fish club's auction in history of the U.S. Like, stupid money. <laughs> so... There's a lot of money in Seattle. It's expensive to live in Seattle. There's a lot of tech people. There's a lot of retired people. There's like a billion universities up here. Um, and there's a lot of nature up here. So put all those things together and I think you get um, that. Plus it's like rainy here. People are indoors a lot. Um, you know, and if they're not indoors, then they're nature people and they don't mind getting wet and muddy and being out in the forest and stuff like that. And so that's a whole other type of person that's in the hobby. Um, but for me, it's kind of like, you know, mushrooms in the fall and then uh, winter kind of doesn't happen here. It's kind of just more fall and then gets cold. I really get into aquascaping, growing plants indoors, all that stuff. Breeding fish by spring, try to get done with selling most of my fish. Then move into tubbing, and then uh, summer comes around, try to get to the outdoor lakes, do some fishing and camping and concerts or anything like that that I can get in into, um, do art at art festivals, and used to run my gallery, and usually the summer and spring was always like the, the big money-making season with tourists and the cruise ships and stuff. And then uh, after that, I would... Uh, start all over again with the mushroom foraging for restaurants and then also taking people out, teaching them how to uh, forage mushrooms in an urban environment. Uh, Alex, have you ever watched Bob Moss out of Canada? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, for sure a smaller channel, but definitely um, great, great stuff. So yeah, um, let's see here. Uh, Diane, hello. Welcome to the secret supporter level. I appreciate it. Secrets out. Um, you know, if you ever need anything uh, from the, uh, if you need any anything from your tier level uh, as a reward that I've listed, some of them used to, like one of them says like secret 
live chats. Basically, everyone on that tier at the time a few months ago or six months ago was like, we don't need our own. We feel weird. There's like six people in here. Um, and you talk to people enough on other forums, you know, we'll just chat on, I don't know, live stream chats, uh, like uh, StreamYard, like five or six people on like, you know, Chubb's channel or uh, in the morning on Father Fish's channel or wherever. So um, a lot of people said like, that's not that good of a, uh, of a, uh, of a reward anyways, because like, m like my channel, my content, I tend to talk to you guys as much as I can anyways, I enjoy it. Uh, Christine Richardson, thank you so much. Also, um, member, when you guys join the member support, like I said, um, even the $1.99 level, but of course, any higher level too helps. It's just, it really helps. It, it says like the money's there this month. And I know for 30 days, like, okay, I'll be able to pay that electric bill, be able to pay this. So then I can buy another tank or I can pay my mortgage or whatever. You know, I, I've been doing graphic design and art for so long. Um, that phasing out of it and trying to do less and less of the art I don't want to do and the graphic design I don't want to do and then doing this channel more of the hours of the week is like the dream. That's the dream. I would love to just research and just, you know, find fun stuff and interact with you guys. Um, so if you guys think that has a value, if you want to toss a couple bucks a month towards it and get three to five videos a week or so, um, you know, I'll do my best at that and it's just a lot of fun. So I, I really can't thank you guys enough for that. Uh, and of course, um, you can also support me by, uh, shopping with aquatic arts. I'm really going to try to do some big things with them soon. I really want to get, um, some nonprofit stuff going. They already fuel just a ton of nonprofit organizations, but I really want to, um, uh, I really want to focus on poaching uh, of plants in India and uh, Southeast Asia, Borneo, like Bucephalandra and Crips, not poaching that is, uh, like kind of a fair trade coffee thing, but for our plants and actually having people on the ground. And then uh, I also would love to work on the nano fish. They don't get listed as endangered or um, even extinct sometimes. Uh, until <laughs> way after the fact. And so a lot of times, especially impoverished regions, will not let anybody know that, for instance, like right now, um, the uh, the um, chili rasboras are really suffering. Um, and uh, they're really declining in numbers, like very hard to find in the wild from where what they used to be. Got to go way out farther. And uh, nobody's really saying much about it. Plus, there's also a lot of pollution in the region. And then the weather systems are just changing. The amount of uh, massive uh, monsoons and typhoons hitting Southeast Asia and India in general has really affected things. Plus, the war in Myanmar, the unrest on the Bangladeshi and Indian border, the unrest in the southern Philippines with the Muslim uh, separatists and extremists, um, the, uh, the Indonesian separatists as well as the Buddhist and uh, Hindu factions that have fought each other for years uh, and the communist groups in the Chinese um, in the uh, Hunan province bordering um, Myanmar and Laos, I guess it would be. Uh, so yeah, and the Wa People's Army and the um, Shan People's Army are also large groups that are probably going to fight the military on the side of democracy but they have other agendas like growing a lot of poppies um but in any case there's a lot of issues um you know facing the world but where we get our fish and there are issues that entangle people and our fish and that's kind of what i like to talk about on the channel but um obviously we like to get into the nitty-gritty of the fish and the science and all that stuff but uh what I'm trained in is archaeology, history, anthropology, sociology stuff. So um, not that I consider myself an expert, but I feel like that's more my wheelhouse of what I feel comfortable uh, speaking to or saying that, you know, I've written a lot of papers on it or done a lot of research on it for decades now. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see here. Uh, I bought 10 chili rasboras, all died within three days. Oh, 
uh, was, did you have ammonia or nitrates? Nitrites, because that's usually what does it. Uh, temperature can do it. If it's too hot, they can die. Uh, ick can get them, but you'll see that for sure. Um, also, uh, the other thing that can get them is if the pH swings. So you want to make sure that if they were shipped to you or something, or they were in a pet store that could have had a high nitrate, nitrite mix, or it could have had a pH of say 6.0 and you open the bag and it's gonna swing to like 5.5 or whatever. Um, definitely test the water they're in before you dump them in the tank. That would be my uh, recommendation, but, uh, oh, it's your fault you didn't cycle the tank enough. Blue Dreams also died. Yeah, if usually, you know, shrimp are a pretty good barometer for if your any fish is going to do okay. If you if you have neocaridina shrimp that survive, there's a good chance most of your fish are going to survive. I like to get Malawa shrimp because they breed like crazy. They're clear shrimp, whatever. They're they're easy to manage. They eat lots of algae. They're what's in a lot of my tanks and I throw a couple of those in any tank that I'm like concerned if it's cycled yet and they'll they'll survive 24 hours then almost anything is good in there after that. Um, short of, there could be parasites. That's the thing you'll never know until you've been running a tank for, you know, a month or two. You could have worms or something or some nematode that could be a, a problem. But, uh, yeah, let's see here. Uh, we've all done it. Yep, that's for sure. Don't feel bad. I mean, uh, in the words of many people in the hobby that have come to speak to our fish club, uh, when people say, you know, how'd you get to be an expert in this or that? Or, you know, you're an expert in this and that. And the quick response is always, oh, I've just murdered more fish than you. Uh, so that's kind of the joke, the running joke in the hobby. And I, I agree, you know, you, <laughs> it's unfortunate, but you do kill a lot of fish in the process of keeping new species and trying new things. And um, in the hopes that less fish die in the long run and that you can pass on that knowledge, it, it's worth it. Just make sure you learn something from it, you know, that's all. And don't renew that all the time. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, colony breeding the rasboras. I would definitely say, um, just watch my breeding video on them. Really, the main thing is they'll eat their eggs, they'll eat their brand new babies, so you need dense places for them to hide. If you had a 40 breeder and like 10 um, rasboras and you fed them like um, vinegar eels mixed with say brine shrimp, live stuff, and the, the, the tannins were decent in there, like not super high, but um, almost like half black water and just planted densely, you could even have it like in a 40 breeder cut in half. I mean, but just that footprint, the surface area, you would probably be able to breed tons of them in there. Um, whenever I've had a 40 breeder where I don't have any big fish that, that cruise the tank, um, there's lots of babies that hang out in the corners and in little caves. So I also like to build rock piles in the center because it's that surface level uh where water wood and stone um wherever the water breaks that the, the babies will hang out and speaking of my least killy fish man those things are crazy they're getting eaten quickly um i also got oh i forgot to show you guys i also got the um <laughs> the, the last fish uh that i haven't shared that i got was the um the not the ones outside were called the sparkling blue are just the blue um the blue japanese uh rice fish and I, I kept them inside just because i wasn't sure how they would do i thought that these ones were going to be brighter honestly the ones outside are a million not a million they're like twice or three times brighter in luminosity reflecting uv light uh than the ones is that a dead fish what is this Oh no, what are you? I have no idea what frickin' fish this is. What? It's like, where did it come from? It's so long, it's like a whip, it's like a, it's not a, what is it? I need, where are my tongs?
what? Where did this come from? It's got spiky scales all over it. It's in this tank. Let's see what the heck. I, hmm. Uh, bummer, whatever it is died, but it was not from this tank. So something made a massive leap from this tank over to that tank and over two feet, like one of the red whip tails. That could be where it went like last week when I couldn't find the other one. There's those pretty uh, green and black stiphodons. Um, but then I thought at first, oh, maybe it's one of the uh, dragon micro dragon gobies. But we just saw them. There's one right there. And then the other one was, because uh, that would be a plausible leap. But we saw the other big boy up here. Um... I don't see them at the same time, but they're... I know for a fact that it was the big boy up on the, the log, and that's the smaller one there. Or up on the rock. So, I don't know. That was weird. I don't know where it came from. Flying fish, I guess. A little stressful. I don't know. I want to show you guys the male... Oh, there it is. The male uh, balloon molly. Eh. So pretty. It's all purple and full of color. They have like five huts in here. They won't use any of them. And then of course, like the tanks, like at Jason's place, he up at Redfish, Bluefish, he had all these fish. Uh, oh, and these guys, by the way, they're all healed up. You guys remember how sick they were? They were like covered in slime and um, and uh, ick and bacterial secondary infections. Now they're uh, as mean and evil as ever. I lost two of the eight, but. That's acceptable for how bad they were. I'm actually happy it wasn't worse. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. Okay, guys, so do we have any pressing questions? Uh, not, not about working out, no bench pressing questions, please. I know you guys all expect me to answer those, but uh, at a certain point in the day, I just, I just get tired of it and no more bench press questions. Uh, is it okay to make mistakes as... Oh, it is okay to make mistakes as long as you learn from them. That is correct. Oh, Hank, what's up? Uh, yeah, we gotta talk, Hank, man. I'd like to have a little chat. Uh, <laughs> all good, of course, just because uh, you'd mentioned it. Uh, we'll have to appear on one another's channels, swap it up. Uh... Is breeding fish profitable? I thought it made about even. Oh, breeding fish can be very profitable. I was making over a thousand bucks a month with 10 tanks at my old apartment. Uh, you just got to know what to breed. I mean, panda guppies, damn. For a while, they were going for like 50 bucks a pair. I was selling them for 30 or 40 a pair. And you could crank out if you planned it. So if you didn't sell any fish for like six months, like hold back on your shrimp. Like get a hundred shrimp in a 20 long then let them breed like 60 to 80 viable babies a month and let those grow out and only sell those and keep your base real high numbers. People always get savvy, or not savvy, they get uh, they jump the gun with breeding stuff and they, they're like, okay, I'm gonna breed bettas or I'm gonna breed this or that. And they give away all but like their breeding stock that they started with, they don't build the numbers. Um, it wasn't a goby, it was, uh, whoa, aqua, why is this happening again? Hey, look at that zit or ingrown hair or whatever. Is this not going to let me scroll in the chat again? It did. It's doing that thing. Wow, my mouth is foaming. Better have some Dr. Pepper. Oh, boy. Why am I so zoomed in? Stop it! Um, can we at least get back to even? I'm getting heated. I'm getting foamed. That's right. All right. Well, I can't scroll anywhere. So uh, if you guys have any last questions, I got to get off here soon because my wife went to go watch that movie, A Quiet Place. Um, Alex, thanks for the answers about the chili reservoirs. I just brought, uh, bought a stem plant looking like a Rotala indica. It looks like a Rotunda folia. 
Any thoughts on how to figure out what it is? Yeah, email me or um, post it in the uh, Facebook group. And uh, I or someone else, Meridial, someone like that, will know right off the bat. Rotundifolia, think about it. Uh, rotund, round, fat, like me. Uh, uh, round leaves, generally. Uh, and uh, indica tends to have more spiky, longer leaves, like the Wallachia or the Atra and stuff. Um, how do you get your KH up and your pH down? Ooh, killing it with questions. KH is just calcium. That's all you need to think. I mean, it's more than that, but for fish keeping, think of it as calcium. It's a whole ion exchange thing, but watch my videos on that if you want to learn about that. But basically, uh, get some cuttlefish bone or some calcium or some actual KH uh, buffer. Uh, the carbon and the calcium in your water will allow your water's pH to remain stable. It is a buffer. Um, and uh, any sort of calcium will help the KH. And essentially that will um, bring generally, it'll generally bring up your pH. So it'll generally make your water more alkaline. But if you want to counter that, if you want to counter that, just add more acidity. Now, don't, if some people do add, you know, acid, different types of acid, like, uh, like carbonic acid or nitric acid. You could do that. I wouldn't. Um, yeah, some people add Tums for the, for the calcium and the carbonate. Uh, and that will raise your, your GH a bit too, which is fine for most things. But for KH, it's just basically calcium. That's all you need to think of it as. Um, and some potassium ions sometimes. But um, so you're just increasing that and then you need to cancel it out with the acidity. Now, the weird catch to that is when your water becomes too acidic, it actually breaks down whatever you put in there in the first place to be the KH and GH booster. And so it can cause kind of a, a runaway thing. So even though it's stabilizing the water, the acidity of the water is melting, say your, um, your, your eggs or your shells or your bones or whatever you put in there that has calcium and carbon in it. Um, but I mean, you can, yeah, you can also use boiled chicken eggs. You can, uh, the shells crush them up and put them in a meat, uh, a medium bag. Um, so is hardness probably from a different mineral? Oh man, this stupid chat. I'm going to have to just be done here. If you have questions, ask them in the comments and I'll try to get to them when I can. Of course, when I see, um, uh, 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 a subs uh, <laughs> channel member try to get to those priority wise first but I really do try to get to all of you guys I try to get to any comment from anyone even if they're subscribed or not to my channel eventually um, but apparently the chat is just going to blow past me and when I try to zoom in on chat this is what happens and drives me nuts and you guys nuts um, but it looks like you guys are in good hands in the chat um, and you can probably extrapolate where I was going from that that you kind of just have to be careful when you play with those two variables all right guys well I gotta go um, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day thank you so much super chats chatters thank you mods we didn't have to do any modding hopefully today it looked like everyone was well behaved doing well I highly suggest you guys check out Chubb's video that I linked in the description and especially if you live in the south or warmer places where you get those moths uh, that can eat like you know your wool shirts and all your plants apparently now too and uh, you guys thank you for all the channel memberships that we saw renewed or upgraded all that stuff and the patreon backing I mean all of that stuff helps so much and I just really appreciate you guys and all of that let me know what I can do to help you guys uh, with the success of your tanks. Uh, hopefully we'll be talking about the history of bettas later this week. And hopefully we will also be talking... Oh, tomorrow, I forgot to tell you, I'm doing a live stream that I will post about in the morning. But we are going to have the Blind Fish Keeper on here. Blind Fish Keeper, Alex, what is that? Well, it's a guy from Florida that's blind that keeps fish. And... I talked to him for about two hours the other night. Uh, it's incredible. I mean, he lost his sight at um, 41 years old, I believe, and he's been hasn't had it for five years. Lost his optic nerves, and um, he's able, with a bit of help, to aquascape. I mean, his tanks look great. the The health of his tanks look great, 
And it's just such a positive and moving and encouraging story. It makes me feel like, Alex, your problems are so silly. And I don't mean to minimize my problems, your problems, but I'm just saying there's worse things in life than usually than whatever it is you're dealing with in a given day. And uh, it's a really, it should be a really cool thing. So at four o'clock tomorrow, again, or uh, one o'clock, sorry, one o'clock tomorrow, uh, Pacific time, uh, I will have him live, uh, Brandon, the blind fish keeper. And we will talk about some philosophical stuff, but also like just how does one keep fish when you are blind? Not legally blind, but like blind. Um, so yeah, that should be interesting. And that'll be tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, keep posted for that. But other than that, stupid Zoom. Um, yes, he was on Father Fish uh, in the morning uh, a little bit ago. And I've been meaning to have him on the show for like six months, but uh, uh, things have just been nuts. Okay, apparently the phone's going to zoom in uh, this close now and, and focus, which it couldn't do the whole live stream. So have a great night, you guys. Uh, I'm going to leave it here, and uh, I will talk to you guys later. Uh, thanks for being awesome. Keep spreading the awesome, and I'll talk to you later. Uh, I need 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 new camera gear badly. Bye guys. Bye.